Before the break, we looked at a solution to save homeowners money with better insulation. But what about those of us getting ready to build a house? Wouldn't it make sense to engineer those savings into our homes from the very beginning? Well, that's just what our next Waste Buster is all about. Shane Carter and his company Ridgeview Construction create award-winning sustainable homes that save energy by consuming less. We caught up with Shane on the work site of a home that incorporates solutions of all kinds. Today we are in beautiful Derry, New Hampshire, uh, in uh, a very wooded parcel, um, and we're building a, a really cool timber peg Ridgeview hybrid home, uh, timber frame hybrid home. Timber framing is neat in the sense that it's very process oriented. You know, A begets C begets D, and there's no skipping it. So you get to start with the bottom, the bottom timbers, and move all the way up. Um, and it's a, it's a simple. Uh, and it's, it's one of those cathartic building processes, you know, where it's not bound up by technology. It's you know, you're, you know, you have you know, your tenon cuts and your mortises, and everything goes together. You drive a timber, you know, a, uh, you know, a, a tree nail, a trundle through that, and you know that makes the connection. And although the assembly on site of a timber frame home is not bound up by technology, back in the mill where these particular sections came from, precision computer controlled machines were used to reduce the amount of waste produced in the cutting process. We deliver uh, the most sustainable buildings we can and communities for, for people here in New Hampshire, and Maine and Massachusetts. But sustainable buildings aren't just about gadgets and doodads. Some of the features in this house are engineered to save energy simply by being incorporated into the design of the home. It's an idea called passive design. So here's, here's a, a good example. This is, this is, a, this is a south face of the house, and so we, we put up these, um, these solar shading elements, the, these little roof lines here, because in, in, the, in the peak of the summer, this house would overheat if we didn't have some shading and some way to, to get that, that heat to not come in. So these roof lines are set at the right angle and at the right depth off of the house to, uh, to stop the sun from, from penetrating the, uh, the glazing there. But still, in the winter months, when the sun is lower in the aspect on the horizon, it still allows the, the sun to get in and get some passive, uh, passive solar gain that way when the house needs it in the winter. Um, so that's a pretty cool element. Uh, a passive house uses 10% of the energy of a house built to typical code today. Mm. And that's just tremendous. So just a- Not 10% less, but- 10% of. One tenth. One tenth of what a, a normal home built today would use. Not even the, the homes that we all live in that built in the 1900s or 1800s. Um, so that's a, that's a tremendous concept. And the, the thought process is put a lot of your budget and a lot of your energy into really air sealing and creating a super insulated shell and offset that uh, by having such a lower heat demand and lower consumption in the house that you're really working, uh, you're not consuming, you, you're, you are much more passive in that way, and that you're, uh, you're, not, uh, you're not using resources as much. And uh, it's very easy to heat and cool a home that way in terms of uh, the energy you would need to do that. And, uh, and hopefully, in, in, if it's designed properly, it would even be much less in terms of the water consumption as well as the electricity consumption there. The house actually consumes less, and now this is the important part, for its lifespan, not our lifespan. Uh, all these houses we build should be around for hundreds of years, and uh, I'm pretty sure I won't be, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but these houses will be, and so what the energy these houses use in their lifespan is very important. It's a, it's a huge impact, really, for all of our built environment. Here in New Hampshire, where the residential sector is one of the largest consumers of energy, thinking green and building green sustainable homes makes a lot of sense, but it wasn't always a priority. And Fifteen years ago, we weren't, we weren't talking green, you know, I mean, you know um, at all. The conversation, you know, I mean, really, with the exception of a few very particular niche markets, it wasn't, it wasn't a conversation we were having yet. Um, you know, really, I think it started with just, uh, you know, trying to, you know, insulate houses and seal houses. I think that's where a lot of it really started to come from. Um, and then, you know, moves into cost effectiveness and then, you know, being able to take that, uh, the next step, you know, with Energy Star labels or, you know, the, the, lead, uh, uh, the lead certifications and whatnot. Um, 
you know, it's neat. It's just, you know, seeing what out there. Again, it's just like, you know, how much, you know, we, we can do. You know, being able to, you know, value engineer things by being able to use, you know, drawing upon our own construction experience and whatnot. A good example of value engineering is the way Shane works with the land to preserve each work site's natural resources. Incorporating each lot's natural features into the design of the home is a solution that can save both money and energy. We really worked with the natural topography. This, this land had a, a great slope to it. The clients happened to want uh, a walkout basement uh, so that they could have a finished basement. So we helped them select this particular lot and, and develop it and, and build on it so that it, it met their needs with, while working with the land as much as possible. Um, it also, coincidentally, happened to have the right slope and grade of the land to a, a beautiful solar south orientation. Uh, so that we're able to take advantage of uh, passive solar elements in this house as well and really hopefully offset a little bit of their uh, BTU needs and, uh, and heating demand in the home. Uh, so that's, that's sort of how we try to work with natural resources as much as possible in the land. Shainton has degrees in forestry and environmental sciences. He says he likes to bring an environmental sensitivity to the construction process. Often, that means taking the time to get to know a site. This was so dense and so thick and so overgrown and you know we came in here and I was flagging all the trees and, and, and saying what we're going to choose to keep and you know we're keeping these little birch trees over here and we got this cool little this, this huge actually uh, Russian olive that you know if you were to go to buy that at a nursery would be I don't know how much but a lot of money and we're able to leave that here just by identifying it in the, in the land clearing process and saying oh wow that's cool let's keep that. That's another feature we found over here is this, uh, this old um, uh, chimney from an old homestead. And uh, just in the deep of the woods, you, you couldn't, this was so thick in here, you couldn't see it. Huh. And uh, on the side of it there, there is a little opening. So that was the chimney to probably a very, very old, for 1700s, definitely 18th century, I would say. Uh, and uh, they've, they've just been abandoned long ago. But, it's a cool feature along with these old stone walls that were you know, just in the middle of the forest. So we try and keep really neat features like that. Um, the homeowners absolutely appreciate that. They, they take complete pride in, in, this, in this element now because it's unique. How many of us can say that we have an 18th century uh, chimney in our backyard? Yeah. <laughs> While Shane and his crew work on one sustainable home here in Derry, we might wonder, what's next? You know, when people, uh you know, really start to change the, how, they, how they think about homes is, is, is when we're going to start seeing the, the innovation come about when the costs come down and whatnot. That's, and that, that's the big thing we're waiting for. You know, the ideas are there, you know, the, 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 all, the gra all the framework is there. It's just a matter of executing and allowing builders, the, you know, the trade groups, vendors all kind of come together. And that's when we're going to see, you know, the, the half million dollar house and under being able to be available for everybody. You know, as far as being energy efficient, being able to use reclaimed resources, being able to use, um, uh, uh, you know, recycled lumbers, being able to use energy efficient building practices and to have that cost be available to everybody. And that's, I, I think that's gonna be the next, the next thing. But we're also working on our own parcels of land uh, for future development in the, in the coming years where we can implement some of our land development uh, goals and strategies to create more engaged communities, to create communities that are, that are much more focused on uh, agriculture and, uh, and truly being sustainable as a development itself, not just sustainable in the individual home we build or, uh, or, or in the individual feature of a home, but sort of taking a step back from that and hopefully creating a sustainability on a, on a larger level as well. Cool. From sustainable homes to sustainable communities, that sounds like a solution worth working towards. We'll be right back.